damn, Lupe is killing this hoe. Yeah. Lupe is killing this shit. I haven't heard nothing from Lupe in like. Who's this? Lupe Fiasco and Colleen Illis and Dinosaurs. This shit, yeah. Fuck. It's been a long time. What y'all listening to? What kind of music y'all listening to, banging to? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is vibe. Yeah, you, you putting me on some new shit. <laughs> That's Jay Alamo on the ones and twos. You better get with it. Yeah. I haven't heard Lupe in a while. Who running the game? Who running the rap game right now? Little baby. Little, little baby, 100%. Yeah. Unanimous. <laughs> One up there, too, though. Gunner's, Gunner yeah. got some shit, too. But Little Baby is just. Oh, yeah. Hold on. Yeah. We got to talk about Young Boy. Young Boy. Ah. Yeah. That's young your, Boy top three. That's, for that's sure. your play style. Young Boy is your play style, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Aggressive, like yeah, tough. I see why you listen to NBA Young Boy. So now nah, I think, uh, like you said, Gunna as well definitely running the game too with that latest album. I'm, it's growing on me, so that's definitely fire. Welcome back to the Plug Podcast. If you haven't already, make sure you plug in, subscribe, like, share, um, all the above. The information is in the description. This is Plug Podcast number 19. We're going to have two special guests uh, join us here very shortly. Don't hype me. We also go to have Marcus King here. You may know him from Sideline Cancer. Um, if you're from San Antonio, you know him from Warren High School. Um, so definitely a homegrown San Antonio legend himself. I'm going to be joining the podcast very shortly as well. So you know we got to keep the legends going here in San Antonio. Uh, Want to give a quick shout out to our sponsors as well big brothers barbershop definitely check them out those guys always doing great work shout out king cuts for plugging in the interview uh with don't hype me and marcus king that you guys are about to see so shout out to him we also want to give a quick shout out to ape life apparel as well check out some of their clothing uh definitely have a lot of great clothing um in stock as well we also have Bear Clothing Apparel. Uh, as I mentioned, man, they got some fire, fire uh, material out. Definitely some good clothing out as well. So definitely make sure you go in and check those guys out. Uh, their information in the description. We do have a, a new one uh, as well. So like I've been telling you guys, if you're interested in getting your information on the front end of this podcast, definitely reach out to me, plug in with me. And we'll definitely get you, you know, up and going. We'll figure it out. But for our new sponsor this week, uh, the Shop 808. So make sure you check out 808 Official. The information is in the description below. Definitely some tees, some jeans, some sweats, uh, suits, some hoodies, all the above. You know the fall's coming up. It's time to uh, bundle up a little bit. So definitely check out the 808 Shop. Um, so... Before we get into the podcast uh, with Marcus Ken, don't hype me. NBA was fantastic this weekend. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed finally having basketball back on TV. Um, so definitely a lot of great games that came on. Um, the biggest one I took from the weekend was the, the Toronto Raptors and the Lakers game. Ooh, Raptors look very tough, very, very tough. Um, you know, beating them by almost, I think, 10 to 20 points. Uh, so it was it was a real good Saturday. Saturday was just full of basketball. So like, get in the comments. Let me know what was your favorite game, who's going to be the sleeper, uh, you know, coming up or the dark horse in this uh, season because it's a little bit different. Um, and you can definitely tell uh, a, lot of, a lot of advantages. Denver is a very big team. So it, it looks like everyone's healthy. You got the Blazers who look like they got everyone healthy. The Spurs just won. So, man, basketball is looking real good, real, real good. So, uh, less of that, we got Marcus King coming up here very soon along with Don't Hype Me. Don't Hype Me actually is sponsored all the music videos. So, let's get into the first music video. Let's get it. Hard times, 
sometimes, hard times, but we here now I see my grandma drop some tears when we was in a drought Please stop that crying, we don't figure this out I got the world up in my hands, don't start counting me out Cause I got dreams that I'm chasing, yeah, they all on the road And I got demons in my head that I've been fighting alone I guess this music keep me sane and keep me all in my zone I miss my mama and my pops and I can't wait till they on Had to go up quick, man, had to own my shit, man I just hope these niggas don't play games, gotta keep a stick, man And I know my brothers got my back to the end of time I'ma get on both, I stop, I just need me some time Money, only thing on my mind Had to put everything on the line If I wanted, I take it, it's mine I think I just keep giving me signs Pops telling me that I'ma make it I'ma trap right out of the vacant Shorty whooping and why she be naked Count money to help with my patience So I guess I'm smoking by myself Cause I can't trust the soul Welcome to the Plug Podcast number 19 uh, We got a special guest Don't Hype Me here Definitely Indeed. follow him uh, as well Don't Hype Me is Productions pretty much photos music videos and everything in between so definitely what up don't hide me what's going on partner how you doing what's happening what's happening and then of course the man in the middle mr uh college leading scorer himself mr marcus elam mr game time i mean marcus king what up man yeah, good, good. <laughs> what up dog man, what up bro. welcome to the podcast bro appreciate, you. appreciate y'all boys kicking it with me on podcast number 19 a lot of questions, a lot of things I want to get into, man. You definitely had a spectacular performance, um, you know, in the basketball tournament. So definitely handled your business, to say yeah, the least, man. Appreciate you, man. Um, but before we get into that, how's quarantine life? How's everything been going for you, bro? Man, I mean, quarantine life is crazy. I started my quarantine life in uh, Taiwan. I yeah. was out there finishing the season. And yeah. then I came back and, you know, just really been inside, you know, just – you know, being a, a father, yeah. kicking it with, you know, family and friends, you know, more than anything. Cause definitely, we definitely. can't do nothing. Like, can't get outside and stuff. So, that's how my quarantine life has been. Definitely. And that's that's very good. I know you're a very family-oriented person as well. Um, definitely, your family is definitely your backbone. I heard stories about you at, uh, what, a court of America with your dad and having basketball camps and stuff like that. So definitely home chrome. So yeah. uh, how's your, your family, your immediate family, everyone doing good there? Yeah, immediate family doing good. Uh, my father, you know, raising two kids, little brother and sister with mm-hmm. his wife. And then my mom and my stepfather, they good on that hand. So, good. you know, my sisters and brothers doing good. So, you know, my family is good. So, you know, yeah, yeah. straight. How about you, Don't Hide Me? How you living on quarantine? How things been going for you? Shit, we've been, been chilling. It's been good. <laughs> yeah, I've seen been some of those photos. different ways to uh, make, mm-hmm. make money. Yeah, no, nah, I've seen some of those photos. You guys check out some of these photos right now. Uh, these photos are from Don't Hide Me. Um, how can they get a hold of some of these photos that we, we're showing right now? You can just hit my, my DMs directly yeah. uh, on Instagram, Twitter, at Don't Hide Me. For sure. So it definitely seems like you're in, in between in, uh, enemy lines right there with some of those photos, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. We was out there for real. Yeah. So definitely very good photography as well. Um, so very good to hear you guys doing well during this quarantine. You continue to stay blessed, stay safe to your family and friends as well. Um, your daughter's doing good as well. Yeah, your, your daughter's yeah, birthday yeah, coming yeah. up soon. She, uh, she turned one uh, next month. Yeah. 24, so, yeah, she's doing good. She's yeah. getting bigger by the day. <laughs> they only get bigger. My daughter's yeah. two, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. And starting trying to talk. Yeah. Yeah, you're not. Yeah, yeah you're you going to love it, but you're going to be like, <laughs> little baby, listen here. Chill out. <laughs> Chill out. So, yeah. Already, no. yeah. Yeah, so personal story. I mean, I remember you had a basketball camp here uh exactly the day she was born here at Warren mm-hmm. uh high school uh you had put on a basketball camp and I actually got to DJ it uh as well and you did what you had to do like nothing was going on and then you bounced right back yeah. I guess to the hospital and don't hide me was there too <laughs> yeah I mean yeah that's my that's my brother he with me everywhere especially yeah. when I'm out here and uh yeah she yeah. was born and then I went to the I stayed up all night she was born at like 152 yeah. Stayed up, got to the camp, and then had to get back. Yeah, you know, make sure everything was good in the yeah. hospital and stuff. So yeah, yeah, man. And congratulations to you, man. Ain't nothing like Appreciate you know it. raising a, a beautiful daughter, man. It's like oh man, now you gotta yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you now, gotta be bro. really on it now. Yeah. So definitely continue to do you and handle your business, bro. Uh, we definitely got your back if you ever need anything on that end. Um, Appreciate it. How was how did it feel to put on 
for war and being able to, you know, be able to be self-established and have a basketball camp uh, at Warren. How, how, how did that make you feel and how did you uh, enjoy that? I mean, that, that was something special to me because, you know, uh, I had seen T.P., uh, Tony and Prince do two before yeah. and just seeing that, man, he giving back to these kids because this is where he from, you know, yeah. this is the school he went to. And so I just wanted to, you know, follow in those footsteps and just be able to get yeah. back to the kids that, you know, go to my school or just around or who know me. Yeah. Because a lot of people know who I am from San Antonio. So just being able sure. to get back is yeah. the reason why I wanted to have that, you know, that camp. And yeah. with the virus and stuff going on this summer, I wasn't able to yeah, put, do, one together. put one together. Yeah. But now nah, you, and you already know it's going to be a, a ritual on this end. So yeah. you let me know when and I'm bringing the speakers out. Yeah, man. Gotcha. So we got it. So definitely it, it, speaking of Warren, um, this is kind of where you kind of uh, turn into the player that you kind of are today. Uh, one of my questions for you is, at what point did you feel like, did you go from being a good player to like, man, I could really be a, a great player at this? When I uh, transferred from Youngstown State, I had went to CMU. At yeah. Youngstown State, my first two years, it was like, yeah, my freshman year was up and down. Yeah. Uh, my sophomore year, I averaged 15, but I just didn't feel like it was going to get me to where I needed to go. Yeah. And so that – that situation over there didn't work out how I wanted to, so I I wanted to leave. And when I got to CMU, I knew I needed to get stronger and work on my body mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to be able to perform at a level that I that I knew I could perform at or yeah. wanted to perform at. And so that year off was the biggest year for me. I was able to get stronger, faster, play against better players, yeah. and do all those type of things. So once I knew I could handle my own throwing that off year, and then coach, you know, the following year he said. I am. He said he gave me the green light and he let me man, do what I wanted to do. So I was doing some research about your your crazy ass, man. And, <laughs> and I seen something about you punch your your, uh, your teammate <laughs> in the nose <laughs> in practice, man. What the hell? Yeah, <laughs> Michael <laughs> Jordan. <laughs> see, that's crazy you said that because I was just saying how my freshman year, yeah. uh, it was up and down. It's because of that situation. I had got in trouble towards yeah. the end of the season. I really got suspended for the rest of the season but uh, <laughs> it really me and him had gotten to it but it really wasn't yeah. even about him i was really frustrated with coach and had Correct. been frustrated with coach for Correct. for weeks you know what i'm Correct. saying so the anger got the best out of me in practice when yeah. he was the person who i felt he's you know he was he at was the time the person, 30, yeah. Yeah, and he yeah. hit me upside my head and i just and kind of took yeah, it from there and i snapped but i mean i apologized to him afterwards because yeah. i knew like you're a good cat it yeah. wasn't even him you know yeah. what i mean it yeah, wasn't yeah, him it's it just so happened you was you was there yeah. and it just so happened i lost my frustration out on you yeah yeah and, so. and i could definitely you know feel probably like when you being held back you know, and you're like, man, I, I feel so much more potential and you're just yeah. being held back. Um, how did you mentally overcome that? Honestly, like you said, that's when you had your break point where you knew you were a good player, great player. But what clicked in your mind going through all that? Like darkness, a lot of cats drop out. Like, hey, yeah. it's my time to go get my nine to five. Yeah. What, what turned you to? I mean, I, I really, I just knew, I mean, I only wanted to play basketball. I ain't Straight never up. had no other job. So, I mean, yeah. I knew, like, I'd have been through stuff throughout my life that was got me ready for the situation that happened through college. So, I mean, I wasn't going to yeah. give up. Yeah. I just knew I had to find a situation that was best for me. I mean, yeah. I love basketball. Basketball is all I know. So, yeah. a coach ain't going to take that from me. You there know you what I mean? Go. You know, a school, a university ain't going to take that from me. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to just figure it out. And, I mean, that's what I did. Man, damn. That's that's definitely what's up. Definitely a way to keep your mind strong. Definitely through those kind of times. And, like you said, you adversity. And you go through certain things that build you up. Um, let's talk about San Antonio and recruitment, your recruitment process. That ain't no easy process. Um, do you feel like um, due to you, you went to, tell me a little bit more about high school. You guys went to state? Yeah, we, um, uh, my junior year we went to state. Uh -huh. Had a good year, uh, had a good AAU season. Okay. The, uh, well, iffy AAU season, I was hurt the yeah. junior summer. I yeah. mean, the, the sophomore summer. Okay. But uh, and then my senior year though, we came back to high school. I mean, I was the best player in the city. Yeah. And I didn't make the playoffs, so that was that was hurtful tough, for me. Yeah. That was tough on me uh, to be watching at home when I know I was better than you know everybody. Yeah, that's so. Uh, then, you know, I put a lot on myself for uh, not being able to lead the yeah. right way, and so uh, 
But yeah, just uh, that's how it was. And so I only got to state one time my junior year. Yeah, yeah. And then from there, your senior year, that's when you committed to yeah, Youngstown, Youngstown State. Okay. Yeah. And tell me a little bit more. I mean, a kid leading the city in scoring, went to state the previous year, and and 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, yeah, 5'8". Five, yeah, five, Guard, what do you think? Do you think it was more or less your height, or do you feel like it was San Antonio being under-recruited that kind of nah, – because, man, you led the nation like, – like, I'm not – we're not, like, talking to you, like, like present tense, like, yeah. as if you're about to go be the NCAA leading right, scorer, right, bro. Right. Like, you led everybody in scoring, yeah. bro. So, tell me a little bit more about overcoming that. Uh, so, uh, in high school, uh, I was getting recruited yeah. highly – my grades was kind of iffy, so some schools would yeah. back out. And then my summer that I was supposed to have a big AU summer, I had got hurt in high schools throughout the year. And I shouldn't yeah. have played, but I tried to play because I wanted to get offers, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. And that just didn't work out how I wanted to. So I ended up getting a little bit healthy, and I played good in Orlando. Yeah. And that's how Youngstown State seen me. Okay. And so previous years, I had got hurt my sophomore year and got hurt my junior year. So yeah. I was like, man, if I get hurt my senior year, yeah, I ain't yeah, going to yeah, have nowhere to go. Know. So yeah. when they, you know, took a chance and they offered me and they stuck with me, I was like, I didn't care that it was in Ohio or it's going to be cold. Yeah. I just knew I had a guaranteed place to go next year for free. Yeah. And so yeah. that's why I signed. Signed so, in, yeah. But like I say, too, like, I mean, people get better. Like, uh, Correct. I'm way Not better wrong. than I was in high school. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's also yeah. more social media back. I mean, now than yeah. it was in high school. Like, if yeah. I had some of these media outlets or Jalen was doing what he's doing now back Correct. in high school, mm -hmm. you never know what could have happened because you're getting seen more. But yeah. I've been, I've gotten better. So that's why I feel like at that time, yeah, okay, there was a lot of people who was better than me, stronger, faster, quicker, or whatever. But yeah. Over time, now, how many of those same people are even hooping or, exactly. or are better than me now? So Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. And so definitely your grind. Uh, where you, I, I'm, I'm not even going to ask you where you got that from. Shout out to JC and the San Antonio <laughs> Legends and definitely instilling a lot of that, you know, grind in you. Um, to talk about a little bit more about your teammate at the time, Torian Prince, and working and training with JC what are some of the things that you learned from him and carry to your game still to this day uh, I mean he really out there going out there you just it's all, it's all about toughness uh, trenches. Yeah. This yep. is the trenches it's hot out trenches. there and there ain't no AC in the gym you gotta run a yeah. roll when it's 100 degrees outside like yeah. that ain't for everybody but I mean yeah. my mental TP's mental we got the same mental and we, we wanted the same goals and wanted to achieve the same goals Yeah. so we, we stuck through it now, I mean not everybody can you know what I'm saying yeah. but yeah I shout out to JC for that and, you know, Smitty, rest in peace, because they just taught us, like, toughness. Like, you know what I mean? You mm -hmm. got to, you know, outwork somebody else to you be You kill successful. whoever's in front of you. Yeah. And yeah. They, it don't matter. Like you said, like, it don't matter who who yeah. in front of you, you got to kill them. It don't matter if you playing, you know, a dude four years younger than you. He's not yeah. supposed to beat you. And that's what they, you know, they emphasize. <laughs> Man, and, to you. and another story, and that is not a damn lie, um, one of Tori and Prince, um, we guys, we are older than you guys by four years. Yeah. Um, so we, I don't, I don't, we never got to play against each other or anything. Um, but I remember my senior year, we had a power forward that was pretty solid, you know, wanting to go to college. And he was like, you can't even beat Torian Prince. Yeah. And I was like, hell nah. Hell nah. He's going to beat Torian. I ain't, ain't no doubt about it. Right. Torian ended up beating, beating him. And yeah. I'm like, oh my God. But that's the heart that JC instills into like players. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it, like you said, four years back, four years up, yeah, don't ten yeah. years up, ten years back. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. so that so I know that's a, a probably a living toll still going. Uh, you know, to this day, and sh definitely shout out to them. Um, do you feel like San Antonio's under recruited? Uh, when it comes to ball players, basketball players, because we got Jordan Clarkson, you got you, we got Chris Ross, we got Andre Rovers. These are like these upper upper echelon, but man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I mean, it's just San Antonio don't got as much. Uh, they don't. I don't think we have as much selection as Dallas and Houston, and it's really yeah. because it's more African Americans out there than it is here. That's what it is. Correct. You know, if you if you look at the research and the stats, it's you know majority yeah. of the college players, majority of the NBA players, are African American. Yeah. Well, right. it ain't uh, more of the African Americans are in Dallas and Houston. You know what I mean. Yeah. So you're able to choose and pick more. You know what I mean. Out here, yeah. you got to select food, but yeah. you also don't have 
the camps that you can go to in yeah. Houston and Dallas. You don't got the yeah. the AAU tournaments that's always popping in the weekends out there. I mean, yeah. just basketball life out here in San Antonio. It's, not the, it's just not how it is in Dallas and Houston. Yeah. So yeah. that's why, uh, you know, there's more, you know, talent out there that way. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, San Antonio's on the come up and stuff, but you got to continue to, you know, work and, and want to just, you know, prove everybody wrong. Correct. Correct. And – Leading in uh, the nation and scoring in 2017 has proven a lot of people wrong. Um, what was your mental uh, averaging that many damn points? Man, I just knew that year I wanted to kill. Uh, the year I was out, the year before I had to sit out, I had watched my boy uh, Khalil Felder. He from uh, Detroit. He played at Oakland. Yeah. He the same size as me. Yeah. He had led the, uh, He was like third or second in, in the country in scoring. Yeah. And number one in assists. And I was like. Yeah. I was like, okay, yeah, he's quick and he's more athletic than me, but I shoot better than him. So yeah, I was yeah. like, if he can average 24 and, and there's so <laughs> yeah. much space, I was like, I know I could do that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, he had more talent around him uh, offensively-wise where he was able to share the ball. But mm -hmm. me being the scorer that I was and just able to, you know, I seen that I knew I could get 20. And then yeah. I was getting 30 and 40 and 40, and I was like, damn, like, yeah. I'm going to just keep running with this. And I wasn't really even trying to average 30 into – it was like 12, 10 games left. People, you know, I started reading the media, seeing yeah. all the paper and all that, saying that I could do something that hasn't been done in 20 years. And I was yeah. like, let's just go, go, do, that. Let's let's go, just do, go do that. Let's just go do that. Let's just go try to do that. And were you killing? I was like, what? This yeah. boy hitting 50. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, we got to drop that highlight during this part. <laughs> shoot, you got to at least right. shoot. <laughs> we got to put the highlight during that part. <laughs> Let them folks go see that. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, there you go. It's, it's been planned. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah. definitely, so, man, we'll get into a little bit more. Um, we're going to get to this music video, but before we get to that music video, Don't Hype Me yes, sir. shoots music videos A1. Um, we shoot everything. Tell me some of the, some of the videos you shot, and um, tell me about the process sometimes of having to get the song and shooting it and the vision you see in it. Uh, a lot of visuals I shot, a lot of local videos. Um, I mm -hmm. did a couple of Jacquees videos. That was yeah. pretty like on the spot. We was just like, let's do it. Yeah, cause yeah. I could do it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. But uh, for the most part, the process be uh, it be easy. Like you just get the song, listen to it. Mm -hmm. Got to get the idea, find location, and yeah, make it happen. Up. Yeah, it's up. And tell me a little bit more. I, I know you've been on tour, uh, with before all this, you know, kicked off. Right. Uh, how was tour life, and how was that? How how was that? That was a good time. Yeah, tour <laughs> life is always good, cause it's like yeah. you get to experience things that everybody can't experience you know what i'm saying yeah and then you with an artist so it's like and then you're involved with music like we love music i love music so it's like yeah. it's nothing it's, it's just a whole different nature. vibe it's really un you can't really explain that shit like yeah if you know you know yeah so as far as like goals what kind of what kind of goals do you have surrounding like shooting videos or forward photography like what do you ultimately want out of that like uh Really, I want, like, my own, like, production company. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Where it's, like, I got different... Maybe I might might not be in L.A., though, but I have a whole video shoot going on in L.A., like... Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just different production avenues for people, for young black people, too. Yeah. Especially in San Antonio, because we don't really have a lot of a lot of that kind of stuff where we getting, like... You know what I'm saying? Really focus on productions. Seriously. At a young age. Seriously. And a lot of it is out there in Austin, and they trying to for build sure, it out Austin. there yeah. in Austin. And I'm like, God... Damn it, no. <laughs> San Antonio, we need all of this. Like we need all of it. It's some studios that are open to SA, but it's like they don't yeah. really offer like the whole spectrum of things that we need. Like Yeah. And then they always want to charge you up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like never like okay, Love, you're, you're good at up. this. Y'all are talented. Mm hmm You know what I'm saying? Let's, Let's make, make it happen. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So definitely, I mean, one of the biggest things I always talk through in my podcast, like I said, I know by the time this podcast is at 90 something, we go beyond. But right now, I just feel like we just got to all come together, unify all our talent. Yeah. And man, just display, 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 man. Um, do you have a music video you want to get into that you shot? Or, uh, yeah, we can play, we can play one. All it's right. going to be a random one. We're going to play one. All right. I don't well, know the name of All right. So this one's, hey, shout out to Don't Hide Me. He's, yeah. he's <laughs> <laughs> he distributing all the videos for you guys tonight. Yeah. So um, definitely make sure the, the link's in the description. Yes, sir. Make sure you follow him for more uh, information. These guys ain't going nowhere. We got one more segment. Let's get into this video. Let's get it. Yeah.
And we get them packs in by the load. I can't catch on lack in up the road. If it's beat, then we clap in where you go. Yeah. If it's beat, then we clap in where you go. Yeah. My young nigga Rex is stuck and we out out in Texas. Running no motherfucking mess. I ain't reading no messages. I'm going harder than hard. I'm in my eyes. You stop. Got on my grind. I just be waiting on my time. I see the hate in these eyes. Making on getting it. Packs on count up 50. Consistently thumb it through bitches. Watch how I run up them digits. I never slipped on my penis. So that's why my niggas. Gonna, I can't even think I cut all my day one so I can see Pick up that waist that he sippin' that lean Drippin' and get his shit from my young nigga reckless thuggin' We out out in Texas Runnin' no motherfuckin' mess I ain't read no message I'm goin' harder than hard I'm in my eyes too started I got on my grind I just be waitin' on my time I see the hate in his eye He mac is on kidney Mac is on countin' up 50 Consistently thumbin' through benches Yo, welcome back from that music video shot by Don't Hype Me. Did. Definitely uh, make sure you get in there and click on that description. Subscribe to that man's page. Go follow him. Um, as far as um, goals, um, nah, we'll get into a little bit more of that in a little bit. Uh, tell, let's talk about the basketball tournament. Let's, let's start off there. Um, you guys did a hell of a job. Let's talk about style eye and cancer. You guys definitely underdogs ranked number 22 yeah. uh, and then pushing all the way all the way into the finals tell me about working with the people at sideline cancer and what you guys uh stand for overall let me uh so people who don't know watch the tournament uh it's a basketball tournament uh, with a prize of two million dollars but it's mm -hmm. winner take all uh single elimination this year it was only 1.3 because of the virus correct but uh sideline cancer we play for uh pancreatic cancer a mm -hmm. lady her her husband died and uh jordan griffin who's the assistant coach of our team it, it, his father is one who died through pancreatic cancer and so uh they give back uh, so they host we have they put this team in the tournament and mm -hmm. we play for them and they just give back and you know throughout the year they're always putting money into you know researches and, and health uh, health hospitals to help with cancer and cancer treatment so yeah. just mm -hmm. knowing that when they hit me up last year when i played the first time i played for them and knowing yeah. that I was going to get a national exposure last year. I decided to play with them and play for just more than myself. You know what right. I mean? For a cause. And it's coming in this year. Yeah. yeah, it was only 24 teams. And we, you know, we got disrespect to being a 22 seed after we, you know, was yeah, a game away right. from getting to the Sweet 16 last year. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We just want to come out there and prove everybody wrong. My team is full of underdogs like myself. Yep. And, uh, you know, we had played against some high caliber players and, you know, some big time names. And we wanted to come out there and show them that. We just as good, or if not better than them. Yeah. And so uh, that's what I had proved throughout this basketball tournament. A lot of thing, a lot of good things happen out of that. Yeah, and, and it just sounds just like what they stand for. You know, trying to fight that fight against cancer. Some people are like, ah, man, that's a really tough one. It's a tough battle. But you know, with the support and the right donations and the right doctors in there, you can beat it. And mm -hmm. just like you guys, like underdogs, you being scoring NCAA <laughs> scoring <Yeah>. champ and <laughs> being that kind of underdog y'all played with that mentality too and to beat you know everybody um let's talk about your nickname that you earned they calling you Marcus Elam yeah. god damn it I was like what is he talking about <laughs> Who, who's Elam who's Marcus Elam <laughs> man god dang it and then they're like Elam ending so I was like oh yeah. that's yeah. Marcus Elam yeah. <laughs> so basically the Elam ending in the TBT is a. Uh, you play to you get a target score so like yeah. you play uh i think it's like 32 33 minutes and then yeah. after the the first dead ball under four minutes they stop yeah. the game and take the clock away and they give yeah. it a target score yeah. and you got to get to that target score so my mindset when they come into the target score is it's open gym it's the yeah. first to whatever yeah, it point. Is, whatever yeah. 78 80, yeah. 80 whatever it is yeah so uh I mean, I play a lot of open gym, you know, I'm at mm -hmm. home and traveling, just love to play pickup ball. So that turns yeah. into that type of atmosphere. And so I had two game winners out of yeah. the four wins we had. Yeah. And that so nice. that's what, and yeah. Game winning assist too, bro. Yeah, game, God both damn. Both that yeah. was like, oh, I was 
It's yelling at your ass, nigga. No shit. <laughs> Mr. Get the Job yeah, Done. So. He got the job done. Yeah. What is it about those big moments that you feel like, what's going through your mind that you feel like you can take over? Because you're not new to yeah. like big time shots, yeah. but what's going through your mind when you like, hey, let me measure up for this big time shot? Like, damn, yeah, just, win, lost, <laughs> win or loss. <laughs> I just, I mean, I just, I, don't, I really don't know. I've been with my dad as a young and just, you know, I was always the best player on my team. And, yeah. you, you know, you're taught as, you know, the best player on the team to, you know, go. So sometimes you got to go win the game for your team. Or yeah. you, you, you want your best player, the, you know, mm -hmm. the, to take the last shot on the team. You know yeah. what I mean? Stuff like that. So I was always like that growing up. Yeah. And I was making them. You know, I started making them. So as I was getting older, you know, being the best player and not being the best player on my team, people trust me with the ball in my hands at the end because – you know, my resume, you have seen yeah. that, like, I'm not afraid to take the shot, shot and yeah. I'm going to hit the shot. That yeah. bitch might go in. Yeah. That bitch going to go in. So it's what? just like, <laughs> so it's like I, I, I love, I mean, you got to be, yeah, you got to have some, some big, yeah, yeah. You gotta That's what's up, dog. You got to be tough. You got to, I mean, and yeah. you just, you got to be, you got to be able to accept failure, too, because there have been some times where I, I, I didn't took it, the shot, yeah. and I missed it. You yeah. know what I mean? absolutely. But, I mean, been times where hey, I didn't hit it too. So that's that was definitely that was definitely fun to watch, man. And I'm um, definitely a, a little bit more about that that tragic loss there. Golden Eagles, you guys got bounced by them twice. Yeah. Um, the first year, now the second year. Do those dudes got y'all number or what? What's up yeah, with I that? Mean, I guess you could say that. Uh, I mean, they beat us last year. We switched the team up and yeah. they beat us again. So yeah. uh, they, and they, they beat y'all by so. Yeah. Ooh, it was so close. That they was switched their team up too, and they added yeah. some key pieces that that helped them Came in the end of late. And uh, I, I just feel like you know we got to make some adjustments to our team to be, yeah. you know, full or full around, you know, better. Yeah. But I mean, as of right now, I guess you could say they got a number. But yeah. I mean, Hopefully we can see him again. Yeah, nah, and that's definitely, man. Y'all go got day number two. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So next year y'all gotta be yeah. number two. <laughs> yeah. we'll be. I mean, I I know we won't get disrespected next year. We'll, yeah, you know, get a buy. Y'all prove. Yeah, y'all yeah. prove y'allself. So definitely, um, beating Joe Johnson previous on oh, that overseas elite. Sorry, Joe Johnson, my bad. Man. <laughs> uh, but beating overseas elite. Um, tell me a little bit more. That game looked like you guys were down and out of it yeah, ain't gonna lie to you and i was like oh man you know i was sitting here i got on instagram <laughs> i was like man that's cheating bro they yeah. got joe johnson that niggas at <laughs> nba all-star like what the hell and then y'all turned the jets on on yeah. the boys i mean it, it's <laughs> funny you say that because uh earlier in the week yeah uh, joe johnson had after his first game he had seen my coach in the elevator yeah. Yeah. And he had told him, he said, man, I'm too old for this shit. Yeah. So when he said that, I said, yeah. if we play him and it was going to back to back, mm -hmm. I said, I knew we were going to get him because he, he, he's built for the big three now. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah, he's good. And yeah. No, no, no disrespect. Like, he's still nice as hell. But man, it's for real. It's nice different, as, yeah. though, when you got to run up and down but, and people are playing hard as hell for that money. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So, you know, he yeah. had one of his you know his worst shooting games of that tournament because yeah. I feel like he was fatigued from the back to back. Yeah, and uh, that's how we got. We was able to uh, execute, execute, and then yeah, yeah, and then push them jets yeah, out yeah, and yeah. finish it. Yeah. I was like, uh oh, is he going to shoot it? I yeah. was like, I thought <laughs> if it was me and I was you, I shot that hole three times when I was you. I said, I would have shot that one. Now shoot that one. Now I shoot that one. Yeah, I wanted to. <laughs> a lot of these guys, yeah. a lot of these guys haven't been playing. Like, yeah, Marcus yeah. really, he been playing since. Yeah. yeah. Cause they league was open back up after the virus, like yeah. once it cleared yeah. up. Uh huh. Yep. They had been playing. I was still playing, and I, I came back as gyms was starting to open back up. Yeah. So it's like I didn't really miss nothing. Man, yeah. and then you got, got that pass off. Yeah. Boom. Oh yeah, that for that shot. Ooh. Yeah, my boy. Shout out to Mo Creek for that. Yeah, I say shout out to that boy for that one. He, yeah. he in there handling business. Yeah. So I mean, you did a hell of a job in that tournament. You had national exposure. I'm talking about me watching. I know. Y'all have probably did numbers that y'all probably never done before, right. uh, you know, for that tournament. You know where I'm going with this. NBA, man, what's up with these knocks, man? What's going on? You got any calls ringing? What's going on? Nah, I mean, no calls for the NBA. Uh, I ain't really been too pressed on the NBA since uh, I actually came out of college and even played yeah. summer league. Didn't even, yeah. at that time, didn't even get my fair chance after leading the country and yeah. scoring. I was played on the summer league team with still still killed the summer league yards. yeah and yeah. still did what i did but didn't really yeah. get to uh, play and do what you know some of these other guys i see doing so yeah, uh, yeah. i mean the nba is you know it's real political um if you look on nba rosters it's not it's probably it's one 
if Isaiah Thomas is on the team, he's yeah. the only guy under five yeah. ten. You know what I mean in yeah. the NBA. Yeah. So you still got some little guards, you know, six feet or just pushing six feet. But yeah. I mean, the way the game is going in the NBA, it's a big man game and it's a switch game. You yeah. got to switch everything. So yeah, true. Little guys are gonna get picked on, which is gonna for I mean, force them to you know, mismatches and double yeah. teams and have your defense scrambling when you could just switch with a 6'6 six, six six guy, guy, six with six. a 6'7 guy. I mean, and it is what it is, but yeah. at the same time, I mean, I know what I could do. And uh, Correct. I feel the NBA teams know what I could do, but it's just not right for their team. And, and what is it that you think that you, you go into, like, need or what do you think is holding you back? Let's not fuck around. What's kind of holding you back from being like – you are, I think people were tweeting out, you're an NBA player during this damn tournament. And I'm like, yeah, he's shooting from half court. Yeah. Like, he's, you got Trey Young that shoot from half court. You got uh, Steph Curry shooting. And then on top of that, I mentioned their names because they were also scoring, one scoring champion just like you were. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm saying. You, you've had players do it. What do you think is going to take for you to be like, man, or if you want to get there, what is it going to take? I mean, I wish I could just grow. And I'm gonna just keep it yeah. 100. Cause yeah. even I, I even, Trey Young, I know Trey. Uh, you know, I hooped with him last summer. Yeah. And when I stood next to him, yeah. he's taller than what I thought. Yeah. Okay. So he's like a legit six two and a half. You okay. know what I mean? So it's just like, you know, Curry, he's six six two, whatever, six, six two, three. So yeah. it's like, yeah, Chris Paul is short. Chris Paul is like six feet. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Chris Paul, you know, he's he's he was different. You know yeah. what I mean? At the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was yeah. Chris yeah. Paul. But uh <laughs> Yeah. I mean, if I could, you know, the way that just the way the NBA is going, look yeah. at all the guards that's coming in. Like, everybody's just big, like 6'5", 6'4", 6'10", point guard. You know, Ben Simmons, you know, was that playing point guard. You know, mm-hmm. Giannis wants to play a point guard. I'm watching the NBA the other day. They're sending the smallest guy to switch on whoever so they could, so Giannis can get the mismatch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. NBA yeah. teams ain't finna see, see me that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you got Bobo coming off. Yeah, Bobo now. He's yeah, he's yeah. blocking, running down. Yeah, he's 7'2", 7'3", playing yeah. out there on the wing. So it's just like, I mean, it sucks. I mean, I know I could play there, mm-hmm. but at the same time, I they were thinking that it's probably more a disadvantage than an advantage. Yeah. Because they don't want me to come in there. And score anyway, you know. Yeah. I mean? They just want me to just be solid, execute, run the team, and yeah. I mean, that's not really what I'm looking for anyway. I'm really trying to hoop. I'm trying to. Trying to yeah. <laughs> so, so speaking of hooping, man, like big three, you interested? You ever hit Ice Cube up yet? <laughs> nah, ice I never. Cube. Hit, I never hit Ice Cube, but uh, I definitely would do the big three. Uh, I mean, I've been hearing people tweet about it or whatever, yeah. but. Uh, yeah. I ain't really worried about the big three right now. I want to yeah. continue to make Get money, professional overseas, yeah. and have a good career in there towards the end, you know, when I still want to play, which, you know, he's getting older, then I, you know, the big three still that. pop and I'll go there. Yeah. It's yeah. not on my mind. Cube, hit my man up. We got you. <laughs> we'll tweet it out to him. Hit my man up. Because he need to be on tour. And when you make that San Antonio tour, you holding it down yeah. and many others. So, not shout out big real. three, too. So, man, um, you talked a little bit about playing ball throughout – uh, was it Yulon? Yeah, Is that where you, you were at? Uh, Yulon Lexus. Yeah, okay. That's in Taiwan. Okay, in Taiwan. That's where you had, did your last season at. Yeah, I just finished. Uh, yeah. Um, you won scoring champion and assist as yeah, well. Yeah. So you're doing a mixture of both of them. Tell, tell me a little bit more about that culture over there. Let's talk about the culture first, uh, and then we'll talk about yeah, ball. Yeah, so Taiwan was a different. Uh, I mean, I've been a lot around Asia, South Korea, Thailand, yeah. Taiwan. Yeah. Uh, Philippines, Macau, all type of different places in Asia. But Taiwan yeah. was different. Uh, I mean, it was very Americanized. Uh, yeah. It was yeah. cool, you know, going out venues. All that stuff was cool. But uh, the, when the virus happened, our league was the only league in the world I was still able to play mm-hmm. um, because it was controlled environment, no fans, yeah. and that we had to finish so that league can get their money, yeah. which is, you know, as, you know, leagues started opening back up as in other countries. But at that time, it was just different. Like, I was, you know, again, on the only play, I mean, the only person playing basketball. So, yeah. you know, that was the only thing that people could see on Instagram and Correct. stuff was, you know, my highlights Highlight, and, yeah. from not my league. You yeah. know what I mean? So, yeah. And you're balling I mean, out I, out there, too. Yeah, that was an amazing experience. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, I love Taiwan. I did a, a day in the life with a guy named Mike out there yeah. right before I left. So, yeah, and if, I never, go, over, if yeah. I never go back there uh, – you definitely left my mark there, yeah. Yeah, that's definitely and, – and what do you say um, next season? What are you trying to look for and, and what kind of league are you trying to get into? Uh, I'm How are things to, going? I'm trying to get back to Europe. Uh, this year I'm going to play in Europe, uh, mm-hmm. high-level Europe, uh, and just get to where I want to go. You know, I want to 
if I can't get to the NBA, I want to play in Euro League, yeah, Euro Cup. You know those top, you know top leagues in Europe because that's right under the NBA. Yeah. What about that G League? What's up with that? Man? Nah, G League. I'm done. I try. I played in the G League. It's just you know, it's just it's really like the NBA. It's so real political because yeah, they have certain I'm guys that. They yeah. want them to, you know, hopefully develop, develop to money to they, they put that yeah, money into them. to get to they, you know, the NBA team. And yeah, I mean, like I said, I'm just there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna do my thing. I'm a hoop, but, but you want to be able to be that it, player, yeah, which it, you can. Or is be, that you are? Is that gonna help me get to where I want to go and to make the money I want to make? Because I'm gonna be in there making For, s- wow. whatever seven bands a month. Yeah, like, and then just like how long it still don't get called up when I could have been overseas making 15, yeah. 20, 25 and then double gotcha. back the year next year, 30, 40, you know, stuff like that. Definitely so. understanding the game. Yeah. Definitely understanding the game. What kind of goals before I let you guys go? Uh, what kind of goals do you have uh, for yourself and set for yourself for the upcoming season, wherever you play, what you got? Uh, well, definitely, uh, you know, every goal every year is to, uh, you know, win a championship. So wherever I go, I definitely want to, you know, win a championship. Yeah. Uh, also, goals that I got moving forward in my life, I want to win the TVT. Yeah, And then sir. I want to uh, I want to play in EuroLeague for a team in EuroLeague, and I want to get to the CBA, which is China Basketball Association. Yeah. So I want to get to those two places. Uh, I feel like I accomplished my basketball career playing in those two leagues. Yeah. Or yeah. even if it's just one or the other, but just staying there for a long majority of time because I'm in the top two leagues do. under the NBA. So yeah. once I get there, I feel like I accomplished to where I want you know, my basketball career. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, if I get there, that money been had took care of itself. So yeah, those are my goals. And just to top it off, just want to win that TBT one time. Cause man, I was so close. And that's so a lot close. Of money. Ooh, man, yeah, so. and a lot of money. Yeah, and I was like, ah, oh, man, I would have start fighting everybody on the way out of there. <laughs> <laughs> run it back, run that back. <laughs> so, so definitely, um, don't hide me. What's some of the pro- upcoming projects? You got any upcoming projects you uh, working on? Anything? People could uh, look into. I know Jaquees just got a song out there uh, with Chris Brown. You shooting that video? Damn it! Oh no, nah, it already <laughs> got shot. Uh, my, my bro B Pace shot it. Shout out to B Pace. Yeah, who, uh, he shot the video. Okay, yeah, it was super dope. Yeah. But uh, upcoming projects, uh, shit, just a lot of stuff. Lot of stuff with Clarkson coming out. Yeah, yeah. Y'all you guys, see, uh, uh, you guys shot a documentary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Part one. It was called uh, No Hype. Man, it was, came uh, out beautiful. It came it, out beautiful, man. I mean, like the scenery, the music selections, and it, the angles, and everything came out beautiful. So, you, where can we find part one at? It's on uh, his YouTube. Just okay. Type in Jordan Clarkson on YouTube, and it'll, it'll pop up. And then you working on any more? Even LeBron shot that documentary out. Yeah, that was uh-huh. dope. That for was sure, dope. Sure. I remember you sharing that. So definitely, I mean, any other, um, what what else kind of projects would you like to, who would you like to work with if you could work with somebody? Future and Drake. Hey, hey that's already Future yeah. and Drake. And I and mean. And Young Boy. And Young Boy. Mm, okay. Yeah. yeah. So for definitely, sure. I definitely set those goals. They ain't, they ain't, we ain't far off, don't hide me. You got that probably the next six months for sure. Um, so definitely, how can these guys, how can the people plugged into the podcast follow you fellas? Uh, you can follow me on Instagram, uh, MJRK3. Yes, sir. Uh, Twitter, Marcus3King. And uh, that's all I got. I ain't got nothing else. Yes, sir. Don't, <laughs> don't hide, hide me. me everywhere. <laughs> yes, sir. Literally. Yes, sir. Everywhere. Anything, any last words, Marcus, that you want to give out to the people? Any shout outs? Anything that you want to? No, I mean, just uh, shout out. I really want to say shout out to my family, friends who, you know, keep it up with me, support me, and yeah. stay down with me. And just shout out to Sen- uh, City of San Antonio for. Yes, sir. You know, sticking by me and and, rock, and rocking with the kids. So yes, sir. Arrest Forever. the police who killed Breonna Taylor. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. That too. That's that's I justice know. for Breonna Taylor. Definitely. That's a. That's all we. That's all that needs to be said. Plug podcast nineteen. We out.